So now that you have a basic understanding of what present value is and what net present value is, uh, I'm going to take a slight detour here and give you uh, a slight deeper understanding behind the concepts of opportunity cost and discount rate. You know, when we say our opportunity cost is 5% or 6% or 10%, you know, what does that really mean? This is extremely important for you to understand. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is uh, continue with our example uh, that we were talking about last time. So you may recall that we were talking about the situation where uh, you had identified a house House, which was available for purchase for $280,000 and your real estate agent or you were absolutely certain uh, that you will be able to sell it for $320,000 in one year's time as the decision that you faced was should you purchase it so very quickly the way that you had approached this problem is that you were saying look here's time period zero here's time period one or uh, one year away from now, the decision basically is, should I spend $280,000 today, knowing that I will get $320,000 one year from now? So we argued that uh, since the banks are paying an interest rate of 5%, what you should account for is that when you are going to spend this $280,000 to buy this house, you will not only uh, be parting with this 280, but also lose out on the 5% you could have earned. And therefore, you need to account for that by discounting this $320,000 at this 5%. Uh, and so you figured afterwards that the net present value of this investment uh, came out to 24,761.90. Uh, and so it's still a, still a good investment. And so this net present value we had calculated uh, at our discount rate of 5%, which was what the banks were offering. Okay, so all well and good. Let's take the same example, except now we change things a little bit. Let's suppose our real estate agent comes out and says, yes, this house is available. Only now our real estate agent is not absolutely certain. Uh, there is So our real estate agent says, look, I think we can sell this house for $320,000, but it's kind of risky. Uh, let's let's uh, put a little bit more structure on that. Let's suppose that our real estate agent uh, comes out and says, look, I think there's a 50% chance that actually there's a downturn in the real estate market. And so in one year, you'll only be able to sell this house for uh, 200,000. Uh, however, there is a good chance that uh, the real estate market is looking really, really good in one year's time, uh, in which case uh, you may be able to sell this house for as high as 440 thousand uh, dollars now I have chosen these numbers a little bit strategically because if uh, if you ask if you if you take a look at you know what you would make on average or what we refer to in statistics as the uh, expected uh, expected value expected value of the house in one year this would be 0.5 or 50%. There's a 50% chance uh, that uh, you will either get 200,000 and uh, there is a 50% chance uh, that you will get uh, 440,000. Uh, and if you do all this math, this actually comes out to exactly $320,000. Um, and so this is basically this $320,000 here as well. My main point is that our real estate agent is now coming out and saying, look, you know, I still feel that you can get this 320 one year from now, but it's kind of risky. That, so on average, like if you if you bought and sold this house repeatedly, you know, on average, you'd sell, you'd, you'd get 320000 in one year. But, you know, there's this sort of risk involved. So now the question is, should you purchase this house? Um, now you might say, well, I'm still getting $320,000, you know, on average, the banks are offering 5%. Uh, and, and so you might say, well, the net present value of, of the house of buying this house is still 24,761.90, except I'd, I'd tell you that, look, you can't think of it that way. Uh, because now when you'll be uh, talking to your real estate agent, you'll be like, 
dude, this looks like a risky proposition. I mean, I could potentially lose out on my initial investment of 280 because I, I may be selling this house for $200,000. Uh, your real estate agent says, well, yeah, sure, but look, what are you going to do? Uh, put your money in the bank at 5%? Um, you know, here, at least you can make $320,000, which is what, $40,000 uh, more than your initial investment? And so $40,000 over $280,000, that's about uh, roughly, that's roughly 14% return on your investment, uh, you know, on average. And so, would you rather make 5% in the bank or would you rather make 14% uh, by investing here? Do you see the problem with that logic? The problem with that logic is that this is not an apples to apples comparison because when your real estate agent, a real estate agent will say something like that, you'd be like, dude, what are you talking about? When I go and take this $280,000 and put it in the bank at 5%, you know, I can spend the whole year watching Netflix you know, just have a peace of mind that, look, I will get this 5%. But here, if I invest in this house, this 14% is pretty risky. I mean, yeah, on average, I'll make this 14% if I did this exercise repeatedly. Uh, but, but you know, sometimes I'll lose money and sometimes I'll make a lot of money. So it's not an apples to apples comparison. Uh, it will cause me all these sleepless nights thinking about how my house is going to be looking like in one year's time. I need some compensation uh, for those uh, sleepless nights that I'm going to have. So I'm not comfortable just making 5% here. I want something more. So your real estate uh, agent might say, okay, point well taken. So you are making more than 5% here. You're making roughly 14%. Is that not good enough? Uh, and now that's an interesting question, right? Um, is this 14% high enough to compensate you for that additional risk that you're taking on? Uh, we don't know. Uh, it would be great if we had some equation or some model which told us, look, if uh, if, uh, if we're taking this much risk on, then this is the extra return that we should want from our investment. Uh, turns out that there are such models, but we're not going to go that route right now. Uh, but what you can say to your real estate agent is, uh, let me take a look at what other investments, which are as risky as buying this house, are yielding. Let me say that again. Let me go and look at other investments which are as risky as this $320,000 one year from now. Let me take a look at what those are promising out there in the market. And so now let's suppose that those investments are offering something like 20%. Now would you buy this house? It takes no rocket scientist to argue that no, it doesn't look like a good enough investment anymore because you're only hoping to get 14% from this one, whereas you can get 20% on other investments that are equally risky. And so my main point is this. When we say, what is our opportunity cost? Our opportunity cost is the rate of return we could have earned on an alternative investment which is of equal risk, which is of equal risk. Uh, things when things, so you were fine discounting at 5% in the previous example when you were absolutely certain that you would get 320 because that was an apples to apples comparison. I'm either going to get $320,000 for certain or I'm going to get 5% in the bank for certain. So now let me see, you know, how do they do, how do the, how do the two compare? But the moment this $320,000 become risky, you can no longer discount this $320,000 at 5%. In fact, what you would need to do is that you would need to discount this $320,000 in this case at 20%. So discount it at 20%, which if you do the math would come out to 266 six six seven approximately oh well point six seven 
which is less than the $280,000 investment that you have to make. And so uh, you wouldn't invest in this house because in present value terms, you're only getting 266667 from this house, whereas you would be investing 280. Basically, we reached the same conclusion. You are only getting a 14% return from this investment, whereas what you really want is 20%. So whether you look at it in terms of returns, whether you look at it in terms of present value or net present value, you basically reach the same decision uh, that you shouldn't invest in this house anymore. So again, my main point is this. Our opportunity cost is, and therefore the rate at we, the rate at which we discount our cash flows, which is our discount rate, which is our discount rate. Our discount rate is our opportunity cost, and our opportunity cost is the rate of return that we could have earned on an alternative investment, which is of equal risk which is of equal risk. Now, uh, later on in finance, you will see a lot of jargon. You will sometimes see the term opportunity cost. Sometimes you will see the term cost of capital. It's the same thing. Opportunity cost and cost of capital are the exact same thing. You're saying that when I am going back one slide, when I, so look, the capital that we're putting up in the house is $280,000. This is the capital. The moment you invest it in a house, you're saying, what is the cost of uh, my capital, right? So how much is putting this capital into this house costing me? Well, it's costing you your opportunity cost, right? So opportunity cost or cost of capital um, or, you know, what is the relevant discount rate? Uh, and sometimes you will, you will hear the term, uh, you know, required rate of return. You know, and so in this case, when you'll be investing in this house, you'll say, you know what? Other investments are giving me 20%. Therefore, my required rate of return from this house is also uh, 20%. Or sometimes you will hear the term, you know, expected rate of return, where, where you'll say, look, the rate of return that I'm expecting from this house is 20% because other investments are which are which are of equal risk are also yielding uh, twenty percent. You'll hear all these terms: opportunity cost, cost of capital, discount rate, required rate of return, expected rate of return. You want to know a secret? They are all the same thing. They're all the same thing. Uh, that's Eddie Murphy, by the way. Some of you may not know him, and I was looking for the different faces of Arya Stark from Games of Thrones. Uh, but couldn't find any. So so anyway, uh, this guy is basically playing, basically playing all these. Anyway, main point, uh, all of these are basically the exact same thing. And so uh, further on in this chapter, uh, we will basically be assuming that uh, the discount rate that we are given uh, is appropriately adjusted for the level of risk that is there in our cash flows, right? And so remember that our opportunity cost and our, or our discount rate must reflect the level of risk that we're taking on uh, when we are investing in a project.